Hello everybody and welcome to the Wellness Way Lab Series. My name is Dr. Jason Nobles. Today we're going to be talking about insulin. Now most people have heard about insulin. It's a hormone produced by the pancreas that helps regulate blood sugar. And the actual function is it binds to the sugar and takes it into the cell so that now we can use that sugar for energy. Okay. The problem is with those cells, if we don't use that energy immediately, the sugar converts to fat and the cells grow and then we grow and then we're on the path to diabetes and obesity. Now the higher our blood sugar becomes, the more insulin we need. Now if we keep our blood sugars elevated through diet or stress or when these things become chronic, we become what's called insulin resistant and that's when the body doesn't use insulin properly. So what happens is when we run these labs on insulin, we'd like to see a number about three to five. Now when we look at a normal insulin lab, the normal range is up to 25. 25 being 26, now we're diabetic. So we don't consider 25 as normal. So when we look, we want three to five. In that case, we are what's called insulin sensitive. So we are efficiently producing insulin that's binding with sugar to clear it from the bloodstream. So when we have insulin resistance, now we're, we get to see our insulin levels climb higher and higher and higher. The problem is that they found that insulin resistance with high insulin blood levels now lead to obesity and diabetes. But much worse than that, now we got heart disease and we also have cancer. So how do we deal with these numbers? Well, we have to train our body to become more insulin sensitive. Okay, we have to clear it from the blood so that now we can actually deal with our blood sugars properly. So when we look at some of these labs that we've run, like I said, we want that number to be between three and five. So I want to put these in order of age, so from youngest to oldest. So we'll start with a 38-year-old male. We ran the test on it and it started out at 17. So within the normal range, but about over three times higher than what we'd actually like to see it. And he was about 60 pounds overweight. Now on the next person who was also heavy and overweight, he was a little bit older and his level was at 48. And now we go into a 50-year-old male and his number was at 151. So when we get insulin resistant, it's a cumulative effect day by day. We just get more and more and more insulin in our body, in our bloodstream, and that way we're more likely to develop these cancer and heart disease problems, okay? So when we look, now we have a younger male, age 34, who his blood sugar was actually 356. And when he told me that this was a fasting number and it was pretty good for him, I was kind of shocked because when I looked at the insulin number, it was only eight, 8.2, I should say. So when I kind of pieced that together with, he was 34 years old, younger than the other two, we can kind of correlate that his number is just going to grow and grow and grow, and he's setting himself up for these problems. Now, that is why measuring not just our blood sugar levels is so important because, like I said, he's, he's at 356, so he's going to be taking more and more insulin to help deal with that and push that number down while pushing himself towards these other problems. So when we take our first person, what I said was at 17, and we look when we retested him, he was all the way down to 12, and in that period of time, just moving down five points, his blood sugar went down just a little bit because he's still a little bit insulin resistant, but his weight went down about 30 pounds. So now when we start being more insulin sensitive, we start dealing with our blood sugar properly and we start functioning more normal. And then we'll naturally bring down our blood sugar levels as well as our insulin levels. So if we're starting to gain weight and we're thinking it's a dietary issue or something like stress that's also putting sugar into the bloodstream, we want to make sure to measure that insulin level so we don't run into these problems down the road and we can start lowering the insulin level not just trying to address the blood sugar, okay? So insulin is driven a lot more, not just by diet, but also by stress. So we have to monitor on both ends because you can eat a really healthy diet, have a very stressful job, and still become insulin resistant that way. So make sure we get our insulin levels checked when we think this is a problem. When we think it's appropriate, we'll be checking it. And I wanna thank you for watching this video, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.